While everyone celebrates Christmas tomorrow, I'll be celebrating St. Spiridon's Day. In the ancient church, in the Church of the East, uh, there was more than just Christmas to celebrate. The West is left with just Christmas and somewhat of Easter, and that's about it. Uh, in the Eastern Christian Church, uh, there were numerous saints, numerous, uh, like St. Saint Nic Saint Nicholas. There's actually a day for St. Nicholas. That's Santa Claus. That's uh, December 19th. Uh, the 25th is St. Spiridon, another important person within the uh, early Christian tradition who, in many ways, stood up for what the church uh, was about. And same thing, there's another one in on January 14th, uh, St. Basil. And so what happens is that you have... <laughs> Rather than just me having two two uh, feasts for going to church uh, a year, we have uh, two or three, if not more, per month uh, that you have in terms of a celebration. So the church, indeed, uh, instead of being instead of functioning as an institu as institution, in many ways, the church, depending on who is running the church, acts as a house. And in this uh, uh, operation of the house, other than the, other than an institution, you have feasts. You have like family dinners. You go to you go you go to a grandpa's house, or you go to uh, an uncle's house or an aunt's house. Uh, 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 you have a number of relatives you go to. You go to their houses. They, you celebrate a birthday. You celebrate. Uh, 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 you know, something special going on in the family, or just maybe even a Sunday dinner. Well, this is what church is supposed to be like. It's supposed to, this is, these are festive moments. Even though, and, and in many cases, this is where it sort of comes in in terms of the, of the dreams and everything. Even the death is festive. The term death is not referred to as death, actually. It's not uh, necros or thanatos. But rather, it is referred to as makarizi, makarios. And makarios literally translates into happiness. So it's viewed as a happiness because this is the, in many cases, this is the beginning, beginning of the day that you, you, you uh, arrive in heaven. That's your birth. Our physical death is our birth into heaven, our birth into the house of the Lord, if you will. Or whichever house you're attached to. I'm, I'm attached to the house of St. Nectarius. And the house of St. Nectarius is within the house of the Lord, so I'll be born into the house of St. Nectarius. Which is within the house of the Lord. As it's stated in the Gospel that there are many rooms Within my my, my my father's house, so <laughs> there's your uh, sort of your reference right there, and so there's no need to sort of in terms of death. It's not the death you mourn, but rather the, the disconnect that you are going to experience uh, with the person that you love, uh, you know, your father, an uncle, or, or, or an aunt, or a mother, or, you know. These are the things we mourn as we mourn that we don't have that connection anymore. And it becomes a complex thing. So, tomorrow on the 25th, because this is the opening vlog for the 24th, when everyone else is celebrating uh, Christmas, I'll be celebrating St. Spirit on Day. And St. Spirit on Day is, 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 is a, a, a fundamentally important uh, spe uh, feast within the church. Anyways, uh, we're uh, getting into this vlog, uh, beginning of the vlog in our terms of opening vlog, uh, opening segment of the vlog. It is 12 hours and 2 minutes into the day of uh, Thursday, December 24th, 2020.
And we'll see, because I won't know for another uh, two, three hours whether or not something more is going to come in in the mail. Uh, that was a special delivery, so uh, whether or not something more in the mail is going to come, uh, I'm not necessarily too sure. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. But anyways, this is you, you back to our discussion on uh, our conversation on well, death and dreams. Yes, there are certain way there are certain cases where there are predictions, but they're very difficult to discern. There, it's it's not. I'm not sort of given a sort of a heads up. Hey. Directly, so and so is going to die. They don't. It's not a specific name. It's just the feeling. You have the the feeling of death, and whatever emotion you have attached to it, that is present. Uh, consequently, when something is going to go wrong, in terms of the way the day is going to go, or even in the cases of the season. This is, I'll have dreams that I call black dreams. These dreams, in terms of, because you do have uh, levels of brightness in the dream. These dreams are very dark. They typically occur at night. They occur in very dark spaces, uh, closed in, confined. Uh, and there is that feeling of claustrophobia, <laughs> there's that feeling of being closed in. Uh, that sort of presents itself, but it doesn't present itself in a good dream, and you sort of... Dreams, this is, dreams talk about the emotions, and this brings in mood as well. So you have, in when the days are going to be bad, and I see this in terms of what I call my black dreams, when I wake up, I'm okay, more or less, but I just have that feeling this there is a this is the black day, and typically, as you go around the black day, you the different people you meet, everybody's pissed off, everybody's angry, everyone has something wrong going on. They're they're not in a normal state; they are in a state of agitation. And I've had this experience enough. That I know that oh, this is going to be a black day, and this is. <laughs> sort of the situations that before COVID, before the uh, uh, the great fart panic hit, I had these dreams that the dark period was going to be a long time, that it was going not going to be something short, not something quick, but rather something that we would have to sort of persevere through. And these are things that we talk about perseverance. We talk about our attitudes, sort of thing, our moods, our emotions. So. While you can have sort of this fortune telling thing where the guru, I'm going to tell you your fortune, or you know, I'm going to, I had these dreams about this, and I had dreams about that, and so they tell you about these, uh, you know, the, these uh, great fortunes and stuff like that, uh, you, you know, foretelling the future. It doesn't matter if you know what's going to happen. How the question is, how are you going to persevere through? How are you going to survive whatever is going to happen? Are you going to be a person who's depressed? Are you going to be upset about it in terms of of being becoming dysfunctional? Uh, these are the things that sort of you know, and this is what you can sort of practice, and you, you, you practice, and you can, if particularly if you're aware of your dreams, uh, you can take your attitudes that you have and behaviors that you have while you're awake, and bring them into into your dreams. How does, when your behavior change, how do your dreams change? How does the scenario, how does the event that goes on within your dreams, how does that change? How does it adjust? And there are adjustments. There are uh, things that as your, 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 your behavior changes, and this includes whether or not you're in a meditative state, the things you see change as well. Uh, before, if you were very close-minded, if you were a person who was I'm right about everything and everybody else is wrong, that you're not going to see certain things. But as you back off of your own ego, and you do use the meditation to do this, uh, you begin to see more and more, more and more is presented to you. 
But the thing is, the question is, is that more and more and more is presented to you, you do have to be, understand that, that what you're being seen, what you're seeing is may not necessarily be directly uh, understandable in certain, in terms of uh, what you experienced while you were awake. So, th th in other words, the dream can be rather cryptic rather than being open and the, the, sort of the, the, the cryptography of these things. Many cases don't reveal themselves until you've gone through enough experience where you begin to notice, okay, I'm having the, on the bad days that everyone else is pissed off, and not just me, uh, or I'm feeling a little perturbed, but everybody else is pissed off, and everybody else is in a state of agitation. If you notice that happening on a regular basis, well, you can adjust your attitude, and you see other people's attitudes aren't being adjusted. What you have to do is, to, is you have to learn to be more calm, understand, okay, today's a black day, everyone's going to be pissed off. And this is how you react to the situation, even though everybody else in that situation is in, is in the state of agitation. You can pull your agitation off again. It's done through meditation. It's done through these practices. I mean, this, meditation, are uh, they're tools, they're exercises to deal with your centeredness, to deal with your calmness, your sense of, uh, of uh, personal being. Uh, but then, at the same time, you can use these, these these practices as your your calmness comes in, as your ego disappears, and this is what it's designed to do. You can start seeing more and more. You, you become more open to things. And the thing is, is get this is how the prediction occurs. It's not necessarily it's not that that bang here's your one prediction and, and, and this is the way it's going to be. It's over a period of time. That's how the cryptography kind of works. Anyways, uh, I think that's going to be it for now in terms of our opening segment. Uh, there is a uh, fair amount left to do for the day. Uh, I am going back to the dream world. Uh, I use the uh, delivery to uh, sort of move the gaming time forward. And that's why things are sort of a little skewed today. But then, this is the way it always. It, it, something happens, it, it, go, it goes later. Something happens, it goes er, it goes earlier. You know, it goes back and forth depending on what occurs during the day. So, anyways, I will see you probably later on tonight, probably uh, at the uh, back research desk. That's the media room, the media room research desk. We'll see you back there uh, uh, later on tonight. There's the bus. begin this video, this has uh, been tested out two or three times, and so we're in the right space. We've got my video going. I have other videos going on, except my, except you can't do that on YouTube. You have to only use your own material. So here's my material. It's a road vlog, and which is kind of appropriate because I'm testing out my road pants. They're pants that you wear for motorcycles, for mo uh Anything, anytime you're on a motorized vehicle, like like a scooter or a uh, motorcycle or, or what have you, uh, there are pants that uh, provide a degree of safety. And I've been wearing one for a, a while now, and they need to be fixed up a little bit. And that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to fix them up, and you'll see what the pants look like. And then you'll see the new pair that came in uh, just today.
So here's what they look like, and I had made the pair of these duct tape suspenders because they kept falling off. Uh, what happens, the jacket pulls everything down. So now I do have a pair of suspenders, and I need to put them on. It looks like I'm not even going to need to really adjust them that much. Open the clips. Find a spot to put it. Not a matter of sitting down the street and waiting for it to work on the thing. That's good. One's in. Holding very well. And they don't need any adjustment. I'm a little more fatigued than I typically would have been, but uh, it doesn't matter. Find that spot. Some clip to go in. There we go. There we go. Stays up nice. Here's the front. Here's the back. And no adjustments needed for the uh, suspenders. Worked out very well. I have one more pair of pants, the one that just came in. I'm going to try those on and see how those work. Be back in a minute. And you see the vlog, even at the speed I'm going, uh, I've been able to uh, uh, vlog while I speak, uh, vlog while, I, while I'm driving. Yeah, all batteries. Very nice. Yeah, 
I'm, I'm, in third, I'm in second gear only, and I'm doing 45 kilometers an hour. These pants, which are newer, are smaller, and as such, because they have adjustment straps on them, I can put them on loose and then tighten them to where I feel comfortable in terms of wearing them. And these don't require suspenders. So here's the front. These are the tags that are still new. I haven't taken the tags off yet. I've got the uh, pockets in the front, uh, pockets on the side. Here like this. this is, these are car cargo pants, so they have the pockets, but also there's protection on the knees. There's a knee pad here. Now these are, and this is what happens, they have a tendency to fall off as you're riding and stuff like that, as you move around. So you can tighten them. That's what I'm doing now is I'm tightening it to make sure that it's nice and sturdy. If I need to, I'll probably... If I want extra security, I can get another pair of suspenders and put the suspenders on here as well. Uh, there we go. This is the front. This is the back. And this is a new segment of me showing you some of the stuff I get and how I put uh, some of the clothing I get. Uh, I will be showing you the helmet eventually with the two different visors on there. Uh, I'll show you the gloves and how I use my riding, uh, how I put the riding gloves on. I can do that here as well. Uh, so the back media room has become very functional and is now also a research desk. So.